Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Morning Light, 6x8. That's a nice title. Too bad it's not the only time I've used it. But, you know, I used to care a lot about that quite a lot. We, me and my wife would rack our brains, try not to duplicate titles, but, you know, like so many things, you know, you just... All you care about is doing paintings after a while. So I may have even called it Morning Light. I have painted this scene many, many times before. You can find quite a few in the channel if somebody was, you know. I, it's been a while, but I painted it as a square. I painted it way back when, well, well before the video era, you know, like 2009. I have that in the hall. Very lovely painting. Um, the scene almost always provides me with a, a nice painting in, in the live area. Uh, how long is it? A couple hours, so that's a good one for you. Um, you know, I say some of this stuff in the live video, but I, I did, I painted it before, and also that I got the reference uh, one early morning, uh, not long after I'd started doing landscape painting. I uh, got, got up early and got in the car and went out to a park and uh, took some pictures and, uh, um, and been painting it ever since. And every, and every now and again, again I like to paint it again and um, so let's talk about that so if you have a reference photo that you normally first of all you should be taking your own reference photos I I saw someone the other day putting up teaching a teaching toneless painting and doing a good job I reckon and uh, but they're putting up all these reference photos and they're like well you can use these you know but give me attribution on the back of your painting it's like Ugh, just go out and take your own photo how about that you don't need to get another artist involved. That's my feeling. Now, if I do get another artist involved, namely another photographer, um, it will be a pictorialist, you know. Um, also, I have collected a lot of skies from every different place over the years, but a sky photo does not make a painting, you know. In fact, I use the same skies over and over too. They're skies that I really favor. And the skies, I could paint the same sky 10 times in a row and everyone would look very different because you just riff off the of skies. You don't need to get all, you know, exacty about things. I don't get exacty about anything anyway, and you shouldn't either. And that's one of the things pulling us back to um, where we started. <coughs> you know, one of the things that's pretty cool is... Um, Sorry, I just remembered I have some kale on the oven. I could smell that it was done. Hmm. Anyway, um, you know, you're going to be very different uh, every time you, you step up to the plate um, to paint a scene. And I'm not saying, you know, paint the same scene every other day, although you could certainly could, and you'd find, you'd, I think you'd be amazed at the variances, you know, um, unless you were settling down like like one of these uh, you know you see these sites online a lot of times when you're looking up like various artists that you might want to you know collect photos of like Ines or somebody like that and um, you know a lot of them come off these sites that are going to sell you your very own copy of that painting and they come from China and there's whole villages dedicated to this um, and these guys can really paint too and they'll do a pretty close one I have only seen uh, I, I'm not even sure if I've seen one in real life but uh, I wouldn't be surprised I've heard good reports you know I don't want to be completely truthful uh, anyway some of these guys they start learning how to paint when they're very young and uh, really that's a key to getting good it's just doing lots of paintings if you start earlier uh, you're going to be better too because your mind's fresher it's definitely easier to learn things when you're younger um, Anyway, uh, let's talk about the uh, the colors in this painting. Oh, like I mentioned, live area. There's a link below the video. Also, this this painting will be for sale in my store too. So uh, check that out. There will be a link directly below below the video, and then a little deeper link for the members area. Members area is only six bucks a month. Um, half of which goes to Google, but um, you know we aim to please. So in the members area, you'll have a little glimpse of my reference. And also a pretty a full uh, color mixing session where um, I'm breaking this painting into the you know 
some some scenes I might break into like 14 colors this one's maybe six or seven a lot of those are greens let's face it you know you got greens you got these lavenders uh, well, let me see if I can run down the palette for you just for memory would have been titanium white and ivory black that's a given uh, leans pretty heavily in raw umber the drawing was done with burn umber um, this pinky color in the back mixed with some diazine uh, purple some black some white some raw umber um, then I come into it with a little bit of a yellowy color a little later on and some probably yellow ochre I really like to bring in ochres to counteract the purple diazine is off the scale bright um, and you don't can't really tell until you add some white to it and you go wow 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 but it gives you colors you can't get any other way that's one reason why I have diazine on the palette also it dries fairly slow on the palette too so it's okay if you only use it once in a while it's very rare that I have to scrap an entire pile of diazine you know where you contrast it with the old uh, raw umber on the palette you know if you don't use it that day the next day it's already getting the skin which is a good argument for using the umbers for your underpaintings because if uh, you've got limited time and I know you want to paint every day but some days maybe you don't have time to do a whole painting well you could just do uh, underpaintings you could have 10 20 underpaintings done with just a burn umber on the old hardboard oh speaking of and I, yeah, I know people probably would have liked to get this information earlier since we're halfway through the video but hey if you stuck around you're wondering what's he painting on anyway well this is hardboard and it looks a little different in color um, I did tint it I did I did I did tint it with oil paint um, but uh, before that is two coats of transparent gesso that gives me the basic hardboard uh, color um, in this case I had a little bit of some leftover paint one day I think it was um, burnt sienna I just rubbed it into the surface and that is a, is a give me a slightly different color um, very reminiscent of um, sort of the more ready type of uh, color I would start my paintings on for most of the early part of my painting career and that was one thing the tonalists like to do was to work on reds and this uh, hardboard's it's fairly red it's a browny red though it's not a ready red and um, very adaptable for landscape painting and uh, heck I've done figurative stuff on it too um, anyway so oh you know another color yeah so uh, I had the mics green sorry he got distracted which is you know um, acrylide yellow and um, ivory black which gives you a nice green um, and in this case I had to I didn't have phthalo on the palette initially I thought uh, I don't need phthalo but that little bit of green and the main bit of the tree there kind of some of the greens in the uh, shadow areas I wanted a cool green but I didn't want and I did have phthalo green on the palette and that would have given me a cool green but it would have been kind of an icky cool green where would I want it? and I did use phthalo in other parts so I'm not saying phthalo wasn't used in this painting but um, uh, the phthalo blue added into the Mike's green just gave me that bluish green and I brought in a little bit of the old yellow ochre to kind of get that opacity you know that gave me just the green I was looking for um, and a painting like this has a heck of a lot of greens so one of the strategies was contrasting more warmish greens in the areas where there was light with the more coolish greens in the area where there was shadow uh, so that was um, and for this coolish greens of course it's the, all pivoting off the mic screen and this is the stuff I cover in the members area extensively just just letting you know just just got to gotta sell you on that members area because you can tip in you can tip out and uh, I've been making a pretty good effort to to uh, to get kind of teachy these days so if you were in the members area and you bailed maybe come back and check out what I'm doing now you know anyway um, so here you can see I thought oh, I want to go brighter and then the problem is, is it sort of defined things a bit so you'll see in a minute I'm gonna go in with that paper towel it's just kinda I don't want everything to have this etched feeling you know but I did want to brighten things a bit and that's always good if I can think to do it um, I was um, 
You know, we all have our crosses to bear as painters. We all have our things we do that we probably wish uh, we wouldn't and that we're not always aware of while we're doing it. And um, one of mine in the past, uh, and, and to some degree still, is um, my paintings come out a bit dark. And this is because I'm so tonal, you know. Um, and a lot of things can bring that about if that's one of your problems. One of the main things is um, really painting in too bright of a light, for one. Um, but you need to be able to see what you're doing, so you got to kind of know how to work around that. But if it occurs to me that uh, I could brighten things up, I always do. And I've gotten better at that. And there's a fact I'm having a, um, in the gallery there at my art center, we're having a Christmas sale, you know. Um, what do you call it? Cash and carry, right? And um, I've collected a bunch of 5x7s I've had done over the years. Quite a lot of them are redos as well. And... Uh, I'm selling those for a really awesome, uh, good, cheap price to, you know, make some Christmas scratch, you know. And, um, but there was another pile of paintings I was thinking of selling that was really dark. And I thought, nah, these are going to be too dark for a lot of people. And I could go in and try and lighten them or whatever. But they are what they are. They're still beautiful. Um, Anyway, I've had, you know, so it's probably older, some of the older things, just a bit too dark. And uh, so I watch for, watch out for that. I try and, if it occurs to me, I try and get, always get good, some good bright, bright bits in there, even if the overall painting is dark. And I can tell you when I went to the, um, the Louvre back in like, it was 2014 or something like that. Um, I noticed that a lot of the landscapes of the masters, they were really dark, but they would always have this area of really intense light and uh, which would draw your attention and also make things interesting but when people see the darker paintings they will tend to go mmm that's the, an old painting <laughs> because modern sensibilities is everyone's got white walls and if they have anything up it's a poster of a um, the front end of a racing car or who knows what people have up I don't know what people have up they, people used to put things like that up in the 80s when I had some sense of these things so sorry for that um, so let's talk about this grass, you know, one of the things I wanted to avoid, another thing I used to do in the past would be, and I have even done it fairly recently, would just render that grass as a bunch of um, vertical strokes. And that's like, okay, look, it looks okay. But here I kind of wanted to make sure I didn't do too much of that. I didn't want stroke, 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 stroke. I wanted more shapes. Um, another thing I want to point out is you see, I'm actually bringing in kind of a pinkish coral color into the grass as opposed to sticking with the yellow greens and that created a heck of a lot more interest and also complemented the 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 sky you know so it's sort of like you know kind of tying back and um i think that was a really good thing i did um and you know you can justify things like that because there's always like dead grass mixed in with the live grass and then it was early morning too it was all kinds of light um uh, anyway, we're pretty much done with the video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me uh, render this. And uh, Oh, you check out, buy this painting. Why not? I, I'm going to sell it to you for 200 bucks. That's the price. So that's a 6x8. It's fairly small, but really nice. That's 200 bucks US. So there'll be a link for that in the video. And I've been doing that a lot um, lately. Just, you know, hopefully if something's really captured your imagination, um, you can use that as an excuse to support me and just buy it. Anyway, till I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solid, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Try and be patient with people that have opinions uh, and viewpoints differing from your own. And um, God bless you and your family. And uh, please stay out of trouble. <laughs>